Hello, family. God bless you, and welcome to our devotion time. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter. Today, our devotion is titled Raised Incorruptible from 1 Corinthians 15, 51, and 52. We shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your blessed Resurrection Sunday. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And thank you that he rose from the dead to eternal life so that we also can raise and be eternal. That we will spend eternity with you and with our Lord Jesus and with the Holy Spirit. And we praise your name today for that. Lord, we ask that you would help us to have a deeper understanding of exactly how wonderful the gift that you've given us is. That, Father God, we are going to take off the corruptible and put on incorruptible. That, Father, someday we will be as he is. And we thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. And, Lord, I ask for your words today, not mine. Something remarkable happened to the crucified body of Jesus Christ early on Easter Sunday. In a flash of glory, his body was totally transformed. It wasn't simply resuscitated. Some kind of electrical glory supercharged it. And when Jesus opened his eyes, he had an incorruptible body. It was the same body, but now it was glorified and eternalized. No more pain, no more aging, no more decay or corruption. It was equipped for life on both earth and in heaven. According to Philippians 3, God will transform our earthly bodies to be like the glorified body of Jesus. The resurrection is more than a resuscitation. It's a supernatural transformation of our bodies. We will be raised incorruptible. We'll be equipped to live on earth or in heaven. Our bodies will be mature, but not old, responsive, but not sick, natural, and yet supernatural. The resurrection of Jesus Christ provides the proof, the provision, and the pattern for our own resurrection. We will share the glory of Easter with him. Rejoice. Our best days are ahead of us. Oh, amen. That's exciting. I'm getting older, you guys. I know that, that you are too. And when I think of my body having no pain <clears throat> and no corruption and never getting old, you know, never being sick again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Let's go to 1 John. We're going to read out of 1 John chapter 3. And let's start in verse 2. <clears throat> Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. So if you're hoping in the Lord today, live a holy life. Walk in purity and be as Jesus was because there's going to come a time when we see him face to face and we will be as he is. I love that scripture. I It always encourages me to think about the fact that when I see him, I will be as he is. Amen. Now let's jump back over and we're going to go to John. Or no, no, I'm sorry. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians <clears throat> and we're going to read chapter 15. Again, today we're not going to read the part we read yesterday. We're going to read, we're going to read, um, oops, I'm in the wrong book. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Romans. I'm like, that doesn't look right. We're going to read verses um, 35. We're going to start there. And we, we may read through the whole thing because it's talk, talking so much in all of this about what our, our passage talked about. And of course, this is 1 Corinthians our verses today were 51 and 52, which are over here, but we're going to start over here. It says, someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. That's what we were talking about yesterday with the seed that goes into the ground. It has to die. Whatever you sow has to first die and then germinate, and then it bears much fruit. Amen. And so it says, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. 
But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind of human, there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for star differs from star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. In other words, it can die. What is raised is imperishable. It will not die. Amen. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about Adam and him sinning. And we're talking about Jesus, the last Adam, giving life a life-giving spirit, the Holy Spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust, which is us. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven, which is us, when we believe in Jesus. Just as we have been born the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Amen. And then we read over in uh, John, I mean, First John, that it said, we will be as he is when we are face to face with him. I'm going to read on just because I want to. <laughs> I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this imperishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Notice here that Paul, as well as first over in First John, John, at the end of what they were talking about with the resurrection and the, and the new body and all the things that we would receive, once again, they reiterate to us, John said it in, let's go read that real quick. I want to read it right. John said at the end of his recitation, recitation, <laughs> what's that word I'm looking for? He said, by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. Where did I read that? Where was I guys? Three, two. Oh, that's right. It was up here. Oh, he says, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. So after talking about us being like him as he is, he tells us to live a pure life. Over here, we see again, Paul, who says, after all that he talked about, he says, therefore, because of all of this, when he says, therefore, he's talking about what he spoke of before. He says, therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Our labor is not in vain because Jesus Jesus rose again and he is coming for us and we will rise with him and we will put off the perishable and be imperishable. We will put off the corrupt body and put on the incorruptible body. And so the Lord, so Paul here is saying that it's good to follow the Lord, to live a pure life, to be steadfast. Don't be movable, be unshakable, be immovable. 
always abounding in the work of the Lord, always doing more and more and more for the Lord. Because you're not working in vain. Your labor is not in vain. You are going to receive a great reward. And you're going to receive eternity with Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for eternal life. Thank you, Lord, that we will be as you are when we see you face to face. Thank you that death has no victory, that death has no sting. Help us, Lord, by giving us your grace to live steadfast, immovable lives. Help us, Lord, to do more and more and more working for you, advancing your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to live pure lives, knowing that we are not living those lives in vain, but that there is a great reason for it. And that reason is you, that we live for you because we love you. And yes, there will be rewards, but the greatest reward will be being with you. We love you so much and thank you so much today for this Resurrection Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, go have a wonderful time with your families. I love you so much. Enjoy, enjoy your friends today. Enjoy church today. Be blessed and please be safe. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.